Hi, Brooklyn, my boy. Welcome, everyone. It is Wednesday, and I remember it was a few years ago there was someone, I think Keter Cabinets or something, uh, asked if we would do a shear every week on the Daim al and Baruch Hashem, we've been keeping it up, uh, I think, two, two, three years now. I don't know how long we've been doing this. Definitely more than a year, and I think more than two years. So uh, here we are, the uh, Parsha Shmini. So we're in the third Parsha in Leviticus. Visa Haron Yod of El Ha'am. And Aaron lifted up his hands unto the people. Nearly Zukta Heiliger of Melech, Schusigal of Hussamein. Nearly, it seems to me, the Hine at Sadik Holech Tamim Bedvekus. So it says that the tzaddik, the saint, he uh, is always moving constantly in dveikus, in, in attachment, in connection to God. Uh, is connected to the higher worlds. But his constant desire is for the benefit of the Jewish people um, that God should benefit them in every type of uh, outpouring and blessing for that reason he'll lower himself a little bit from his level from his connection this is really narrow is it? Geshert Sarma Ode right here. Um, and then, Ach um, Becholzos, but however, only despite all this, he accomplishes good things because he comes down a little bit out of his uh, meditative attachment to God. Because when the people see how much he desires, uh, almost like he, he lusts to have their their benefits, uh, so to speak, not in a negative way, but like it's a, it's a very strong desire. This is supposed to be a samech, but it's a mem. Humachnis b'libam yiras Hashem That inspires the people and it brings into their hearts the fear of the Lord and the love of God. Because all of them have their hearts inspired and awakened to the worship of God. May his name be blessed. That's what it says that Aaron lifted up his hands. Just like it says that we're going to lift up our, our hearts and our palms. So some say the explanation is the Hainu that if a person lifts up his heart to the worship of the Creator, may, uh, may his name be blessed. Then, because of the tremendous love, and the, and the enthusiasm, the fiery enthusiasm that's in him, who claps his hands. I'll show me a diamond. And that's why worship of the Creator is called by the name of the hands, because people clap their hands in worship. So that's what it means. Aaron lifted up his hands to the people in blessing. According to Hanal, according to what we said above, that the desire of the saint, of the tzaddik, for the people is to benefit them, to, toward, to bring benefits toward the people. And then he blessed them and he came down from performing the sacrifices, the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offering. Perish was a mean in the Hasidic homily here. That through this yard medrogasai, because he lifted up his hands to bless the people, he went down a little bit. He from his spiritual level. Because this level of the saint, the tzaddik, is to constantly check himself. 
every time and every moment. Maybe, God forbid, <coughs> excuse me, I sinned. Even some slight variation of sin. The hearer or some thought of sin. So he's always thinking of repentance. And that's the, what's hinted to here of the reference to the sin offering and the, and the burnt offering. Shabal hear her, because the burnt offering atones for improper thoughts. Vashlamim, the peace offering, remez ladveikas shabo. That's a hint to the attachment to God that is in this mitzvah bringing the sacrifices. Sha'ois says shalom of Mali Shalmala because it makes peace with the heavenly family, with the angels above. Only they chukase haya yorid mim trigase hayel katsasman. Through his desire, he went down a little bit from his level. And Moses and Aaron went to the tent of meeting. The Eshkama Gavni Tzadikim. Because there's many different types of saints. Tzadik Gadol Nikram Shem Boisha. A very high level saint that's called Moses. Vish Tzadik Hashem Madregas Aharon. And there's a saint that's the level of Aaron. And each one on its level ascends and comes in holiness to this archetype that's called the Tent of Meeting. There's the saint that's the archetype of Moses, the saint that's the archetype of Aaron, and both, despite their various archetypes, come to that same archetype of the Tent of Meeting. And they leave, they left, Ritzalaymar means to say, like we said before, that after, subsequently, afterwards, they went a little bit out from their spiritual level. The purpose of that is so they can bless the people, as it says. Canal, as we said above, but then despite all this, Garmim Kedusha Vyir the fact that they came down a bit from their spiritual level benefits the people at large because it inspires the people and and causes them to have holiness and piety for all the people because they, they're looking up to these archetypes of Moses and Aaron. There we are, Hashem El Koha'am. That's why it says, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people, meaning because of the blessing of Aaron and Aaron and Moses leaving the tent of meeting, that caused the glory of the Lord to be visible to all the people. That's what it says in Psalm 93. Your testimonies are very faithful. What does it mean? The Isa Begemara. Cited in the Talmud, Shlesh Midim Zelzeh. There are three that testify one to another. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yisrael V'Shavos. God, the Divine, the, the community called Israel, the Jewish people, and the Sabbath. Nimsi Yisrael Nikra Eidus Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So this means that the Jews, the Israelites, are the testimony of God, of the divine. That's what it means your testimonies are very faithful, meaning that the, who are the testimonies? The Jewish people, right? And in fact, I think there's a famous story that there was, a, a, I think, one of the Habsburg emperors or some European monarch asked uh, his advisors for proof that God exists. And they said it's the Jews, because the fact that after all of the persecution and everything that the Jews have endured, that we still exist, despite all of the attempts to annihilate us in every generation, nonetheless, we're still here because we are testimony of God. And actually, that's part of, in certain churches, that's part of the Christian theology as well, that there's, that there's a testimony that the Jews provide of the existence of God 
And that's why there was a, such a thing in the Catholic Church as the Pope's Jews, because they need to have the testimony of God present. Of course, there's certain different eschatological and theological things that they believe that we don't believe. And of course, we know from Zechariah that in the end, the eschatology is everyone is going to come to us and say they heard God is with us. So they're going to admit that their, their theology and eschatology was wrong. It looks like ours will be right. That's, that's just what the Bible says. I'm not saying that out of any chauvinism. I'm just saying that's very plainly in the text. I understand they're going to understand that homiletically and we're going to understand it literally. Uh, we'll see who's right in the, when it comes. And it looks like it's sooner than later. But it could still be some time off. But anyway, so don't get appointed. Don't get disappointed if it's not as soon as you think. But anyway, the point is, and I always think about this, Rabbi Melech, like Shabbos, when, when we say this, Kapitul Tehillim, as, as Friday we say it, and Friday night, and Shabbos morning, it's part of our liturgy. And, and I look, and if I'm diving with a minion, which I don't always have such a, a luxury, but when I have such a luxury, I look around and I see the, the Eden there in Shul davening, and I, I, I look around and say, Ah! Oh! I, I, like, if you ever daven with me, you'll probably hear, especially Friday night, I look around, Ah! Oh! I, 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 that's just, that's, that's Joe Kolakowski. It's just based on this river Melech. I learned this years ago. And, and it just stuck with me. I even forgot really where it was, but I knew it was, it was in the name of Melech. And I look around, hey, the, the Jewish people who are the, the, the testimony of God are very faithful. Look, we come to Shul and we daven. Oh, Hashem, hey, the Sechnum and Oid. We should be Zoichen, we should have Minyan in our Bismedrish. And unfortunately, we have Tzuris, but. Uh, Hashem should help us, but uh, that's 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 just I'm sharing a personal uh, devotion that that just uh, you know to the point where it's one of those things that like the not that I'm comparing myself in any way to the Kodesh Kedosh of Satmarov, but I'm just saying this, they say the Satmarov said on himself uh, is he just make is he just imitating himself and certainly. You know, when I do stuff like that, it might come to a certain point. And I'm just imitating myself. Uh, not that I have anyone to imitate, but uh, I shouldn't even be imitating myself. You know, I'm certainly not worthy for anyone else to imitate me. And that would, you know, so I, I you know, I said in the in interview with the Ami, that Rabbi Frankfurt said, you can't say that. And, and, and other people have said, all right, you're a choyta, but you're a machta. But if there are people who noch mach mich, then I'd be a machte. But Bukh Hashem, I don't think anyone's noch machin the Kublai Tzaruf. But anyway, um, but that, that's, that's one of my things, is that, that I, I look around when I say that capital, Psalm 93, that, that psalm, hey, the Sechdom Oid, your testimonies are very faithful. I remember the river Melech said that the testimonies means the Jews. I look around, I see Eden davening, come to shul, all different, all different types of Eden. They come to shul Friday night, all different types of shuls. And we all recite this psalm. And, it, and it's true that, 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 that that's where the faithfulness of the Jews is demonstrated, among other things. Not the only time. Pershem nemonim v'chavivim. So it's and, and, and it goes weiter. It's, uh, now I remember this. So when it says that the the testimonies are very trustworthy, it means that shem nemonim they're loyal, bechavivim and they're beloved. Lemi, to whom are we loyal and to whom are we beloved? Before Shaposik, So the scripture, the verse continues. We're going to explain leves chenuava kodesh to thy house. Is fitting holiness. So you have those saints who are always dwelling in the higher worlds, the upper worlds. Hashem yomim. O Lord, for long days, Perishahim, Garmin Bamaseim. The 
tzaddikim cause with their deeds, this pasha de kedusha, but you're, that there spreads holiness, piety, ali dezeh, through this fact that they leave from their level and come to see to, to see the people where they are. Ali dezeh through this, the chol yisrael to the whole Jewish people to the, all the Israelites. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. Well, there's one more. This is a short one. This is the, the, the beasts that you, you may eat. Or that you, you you eat. It doesn't say you may eat, you shall eat, just you eat. Um, nearly, it seems to me, he's a Missouri Kaddish. Inside in the Holy Zohar, a Chai Remes Lashem HaKaddish. That when it says the Chaya, the beast, the living being, is a hint to holy names. The eating the holy names would have been perishal yaday zeh, shal yaday yesh, shal yodom yesh lanu achiz achiz. That we have through the holy names a holding and a life for us. So, for those who say, you know, you don't need to be becham and to shame us and things. Which is a big tzaddikim, but but so of course so even those tzaddikim they knew the shemus also, and so that's that's how we have the connection. It's just that you should daven with with me mystic, but but, but there's still we can learn the inyanim. Oh, Viter, let's do another one. You shouldn't have any zugas, even though this is lo, a little bit longer. Or you should say zoysachaya. This is the animal. Ooh, this is exciting. Right? Daniel, in his eschatological vision, in his apocalypse, he saw a vision of, of a certain beast, and it was Edom, it was the Edomites. It was Rome, that you're going to eat. Right? It says in the Pesach, you're going to eat, you're going to swallow up, you're going to consume your enemies. doesn't mean I've heard claim that there's some kind of cannibalism hinted to here. Chas v'shalom is not what we mean. Um, and, I, and I don't even believe that. I think that's just uh, that's just one of those uh, lies that people say. But Amr HaKosov Scripture says that you're going to have the energy to conquer them, to do, to destroy your enemies, something we need right now, and that's the koyach that we're going to be receiving, that the world is going to be receiving, right, next week is Naka Shemesh, so Naka Shemesh, it means uh, that means that uh, it's, it's, it's similar right, right, Marin Sukkah. So anyway, um, you're going to destroy them. The Hainu we call the Hema. It means from all the the cattle, all the domesticated animals. Uh, the Isa Bugamara, Baba Metziah, is a site in the Talmud, Baba Metziah. Amar Rab Chanina Misura, the Fras. Rab Chanina from Surah that was on the Euphrates said Laravina said to Ravina, who was one of the redactors of the Gemara. You see us Mitzrayim the Chosav Rachmana Gabe Shratzim Lamali. Why does why does the Scripture why does God mention the Exodus when he's also mentioning um, reptiles and bugs and things that we're not allowed to eat? Although I like to have them as pets. I'm a little weird like that, but uh, a stickler clown, as someone said, and I know it. So anyway, what, but why why is it mentioned you'd see us Why is the Exodus mentioned there? Amale so Ravina answered, Amar Kudish Baruchu. The divine said, God said, Ani Shehavchanti. Right? God says, I knew the difference between the Egyptian firstborn and the Israelite Hebrew firstborn. 
and and I, and so too should know the difference between the different species of shrubs and reptiles, and amphibians, and insects, and arachnids, and, and rodents, and things. I'm Leona Hamalakakasha. I'm the one who took them out of Egypt. Is is difficult for me. My Shna the Malo the cause of Rahmana. What's the difference that God lifted us up that, that the scripture says that the merciful one wrote in our scriptures that God wrote. Oh what's going on there? Amale, they said to him, Look at the son of the Vavri Shmuel. It was taught in the academy of Rabbi Ishmael. That it would have been enough for me to bring the Jews out of Egypt if the one thing that he did was they avoided eating shratzim. Who wants to eat shratzim? Right? It's disgusting. You know, the people who do it. Right? And now it's like a whole movement, right? Because people, you know, they want to they think it's better for the environment or some nonsense like that. But no, all right, we can eat the locusts. But even that, a lot of the Sadiqim said, I think it was Laura Chaim she said, not spoke, we shouldn't be doing it because you don't know which species is which. But anyway, just by the virtue of the fact that we're not eating shratzim or we're not tamay mishratzim, we keep the halachas of tum uh, touching the dead shrubs and things like that, that we go to the mikveh afterwards, whatever. That's enough to distinguish them that we don't eat shrubs. We don't eat mice, and we don't eat snails, and we don't eat frogs' legs, and we don't eat geckos, and things like that. I heard someone ate a gecko, got very sick, died. And, and why would you want to eat a gecko? They're so nice. Although like, cows are nice too. But I know I want to eat a cow. I don't know why anyone would want to eat a gecko. But I have a gecko as a pet, but it's alive, so that's okay. It's not, there's no tumor in a live gecko. I'm not eating it. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm not going to the base after uh, uh, after holding it or eating truma or something. I can't eat truma anyway. I'm not a kohen. You know, someone told me there was a kolakowski, a kohen. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yesh uh, Lomar. It was to say a parish, a Gemara now, that we can uh, explain this Talmud, Talmudic passage, as we say, Alpides and Medrash is cited in the Midrash, in the homilies. Shalu Amalachim is a Kurdish Baruch, Lama Baruch Shratzim. Angels ask God, why, why did you create these things? Why did you create Shratzim? Why did you create worms and reptiles and amphibians and, and rodents and all kinds of creepy crawly animals. Can't eat them. Why did God make them? So the blessed Lord answered the angels, it's because of the persecution. What does it mean? If Satan or the or the heathens or whoever else comes to prosecute the Jews and say, God forbid, they're sinning before you and you don't need them, get rid of them already. As Meishiv Loi Hashem Yisbarach, then God's going to answer, Hello, Shratzim ain't Sarach Vem. There's no need for Shratzim either. There's no need for mice and and lizards and and things like that. Klal ain't Sarach Vem. Klal. There's no need for them at all. Afal Pichein Brasim. Despite that I created them. Vizeshamar Anahamala Kashali. So that's what it says I brought them up, that's difficult for me. The Malahu Lashanakboa. When it says I brought them up it means I lived, lifted them up. Shakushbaham Abiyas Israel me beta clippus. Fakatoim him naiflum lamata. That God lifts up the Jews, the Israelites, from among the shells, the forces of evil, from their sins. And the sins and the klipas are falling down. That's what it says, I'm lifting them up. What reason, what merit am I lifting up the Jews from their sins? He says, if it was only, that the only reason was because they, they need shratzim. 
The whole thing is that the fact that they're not defiling themselves with shratzim. With these creepy crawly creatures, these critters. Perish means Hello Yisrael Enoich Mashratzim. Jews don't eat these these creatures, these these creepy crawly creatures. Nimsa ain't serech chlav v'riyasim. There's no need for them. Kevish Yisrael Enoich Lamehem. Jews don't eat them, so we don't need them. There's no need for them in the world because Jews don't eat them. Vafal pichin. Despite that, Brasim, I created them. Kedivrei midrash anal, just like the midrash says, the homily says above. Then there's no power to those who are um, who are um, prosecuting the prosecuting attorneys in, in heaven. The katrigalem in order to prosecute them. And for that reason, I'm going to pick them up and lift them up out of all their other sins. Canal, as we said above, because this one sin they don't do. And that's what it says in the Mishnah in Sanhedrin that all Jews have a portion in the world to come, perish. What does it mean? Klal Yisrael Kanal, the general idea of the Jewish people, as we said above, Agamat Tzadik Nikra Kol, and the saint is also called All. Shahu Iker Klalis Lashpia Lehem Toiva, that's it. he's the main generality to pour onto them benefit, Ubracha, and blessing. Yira and piety and fear, shall you day tzaddik, this Urim Klal Yisrael Bachuva, that through the saint you're invite you're inspiring and arousing the general community of the Jewish people, of the Israelites, to penitence. That's why it says Moses said to Aaron, come close to the altar. First Rashi. Rashi explains. Isaac and Isaac explains. Aaron was ashamed. He was embarrassed. For year Legeshis, and he was afraid that he wasn't worthy to approach the altar. Moses said, Lamata Boish, Lachachnam Karta. Why are you ashamed? That's why you were chosen. In Ikrahu Adam Adam Abusha. The main thing is a person should should have a sense of shame. It's a good sign that a person has shame. Is is a, is, is a shameful is a person who feels shame. Because if a person feels shame, he's not he's going to sin so quickly. Aaron was very embarrassed and ashamed because of the incredible. Humility he had. That's the way of the saint of the tzaddik. He always sees in front of his eyes his sins, some little sin. Even some slight little piece of sin. In his eyes, like a big sin. And he's always humbling himself and bringing himself down. They rob him. Even publicly, he rebukes himself. That's what the Rebbe Melech would do, right? He would, he would, he's writing this. He would go to people's houses, like in the middle of the night. He would, like, start, you know, he'd say, Tegan Chatzos, and he'd start saying, Melech, Melech, there's a Zagatin. He would he would confess his sins, but he, it wasn't the sins he did; it was the sins that his host did, in order to inspire him to 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 repent. When the people hear this, is that if the big cedar tree is falling down in this flame, what should these little pieces of hyssop do that are on the wall. And they repent with perfect penitence. And that's why Moses said to Aaron, why are you ashamed? There's a reason why you're ashamed. It's a good thing. He's not saying don't be ashamed. He said there's a purpose in it. 
that you're ashamed, and you're afraid. That means you're a perfect saint. That means that you're worthy to come close to the altar. That's why you were chosen. That's the way that the tzaddik should should conduct himself in the worship of the blessed Lord. That's what it means. Arnold can approach the altar. What's the It means say, We heard from Moses. That's the level. Habaula, that higher level. Habusha was a chain and then the tremendous uh, shame and humility that he has in his heart, and he did like this. Vyakrivarn al Mizbeach and Arn came close to the altar parish. What does it mean? Shahai Makar Vatsmay Tamid al Mizbeach means he always brought himself constantly closer to the altar. Shahai Maitse Vatsme Chisreinus because he would find faults in himself. Vahaya Mechash of Tamid Shitzach al Mizbeach Kapar. And you think he always needs the altar to atone. And that's a good thing. That's how we're supposed to be. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. Love you. Um, we'll see you later. All right, how do I turn this thing off? This one?